how many habit plans have you tried and failed at? I know in my homemaking career, I cannot even begin to count the number of plans, checklists, systems that I have tried. Most of the time, my attempts were doomed from the beginning because I kept making the same three mistakes over and over and over again. I don't want you to stay stuck making the same mistakes that I did. So let me tell you how to get unstuck and get your homemaking habits set. Hi, you've found the Simply Convivial podcast, short but meaty episodes, helping you banish overwhelm and perfectionism so you can love being a homemaker. What is convivial, you ask? Convivial means doing life together with joy, and isn't that what we want in our homes? But we find that joy is often not our default setting. So we have to choose joy because moms are the atmosphere of our home and we want that atmosphere to be convivial. I'm Misty Winkler, homeschool mom and author of the book, Simplified Organization, Learn to Love What Must Be Done. I'm here to help you organize your attitude, and dig into the good work that God has called you to do in your home. A lot of that good work rests on good habits. But just like joy isn't our default, good habits are definitely not our default either. It's so easy to slip into bad habits and it's so much work to build good habits. If it feels like homemaking habits are hard, it's because they are, but they're worth the effort. Sometimes though, we make them even harder than they normally are by making these three key mistakes about either the nature of habits themselves or the nature of our particular situations as moms of busy households. We don't wanna make these mistakes. So grab a basket of laundry to fold while we dig in. Good homemaking habits include keeping up on the laundry, getting dinner on the table in time, staying on top of the dishes, keeping the home tidied up, connecting with our kids, reading our Bibles, praying, connecting with our husbands, cleaning toilets, tracking what needs to be done, staying on top of our kids' activities, all these things that we try to do every day as homemakers really rest on our habits. Habits provide the foundation for all that we add on to our day. And they can give us strength and structure to take on a large load. When our habits are good, we have an expanded capacity, a greater ability to do more and more good work in our home and community. So that's why it's worth cycling back around and trying again, even after many failed attempts at habit plans. And if that's where you are at today, you are in the right place. Habits are hard and we find all kinds of obstacles and problems crop up that we didn't expect whenever we try to start building better habits as homemakers. But if we know these three key mistakes, if we're aware of them, and if we circumvent them, if we prevent them in our habit plan, 
that habit plan is more likely to take root in our lives. So mistake number one in building homemaking habits is starting in hard mode. Every perfectionist is familiar with this. We don't really think of one key habit that we want to build in our lives. We think of the entire end result and what our life would be like if we had all the good habits. And we make out a plan, we chart a system for what a day would look like, what a week would look like with all the exact right habits in place. We map it out, we chart it out, we have a checklist, and we think we're good to go. All we have to do now is follow the plan, right? And we fall flat on our face. Some of us might have a good day or two, but even if we do, it doesn't last. Those habits don't take because we bit off more than we can chew. The best way to install habits, to build habits in our life is habit stacking. That is connecting one good habit to another, not starting all of them at one time, but starting with one super, super small good habit. Planting it, building it, and then adding another connected to it. Slow and steady really does win the race, even though it feels so slow and so awkward and so unsatisfying. What will really be satisfying, however, is seeing some momentum and traction that comes with actually building some good habits. So it's worth avoiding this mistake. And don't start with all the good habits at once. Don't even start with the ideal single habit. Start with one baby step good habit and just stick with one small habit at a time. Mistake number two is not tracking and reviewing those habits. They say that what gets measured gets done and it's not exactly true in our lives as moms. But what is true in our lives as busy homemakers and moms is that life is that our habits get lost in the muddle. There are always incoming needs, new responsibilities, things coming up. And unless we keep our habit front and center, unless we keep it visible, we're going to lose track. And if we lose track, it's not going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, we don't have a habit. So when we have one small habit, that also makes it easier to track than a big old system. But even if it feels artificial or silly, you do want those check marks. You want to have a place to tally every time you've done your habit. It will help you lay each brick that will eventually build the habit into your life. So don't neglect that piece. Make it visible. Track it. Even when you miss it, just come back and add your next check mark. And slowly, gradually, you will improve your homemaking habits. And this is all connected to the third homemaking habit mistake which is not rewarding yourself rightly. Now, often when we think about rewarding ourselves, we might think of getting a pedicure or chocolate or a new pair of shoes. And that's not the kind of reward that I'm talking about. Those kind of external rewards really aren't very motivating. They don't really work very well, especially when it comes to rewarding ourselves for doing what we really should be doing all along. But just because we're building these habits that we feel like we should be doing anyway, doesn't mean that there should be no reward. 
one thing that makes our habits not actually stick is that we don't take the time to notice and appreciate what doing that habit actually means and how it really affects us. The reward that we need for doing our habits is just a little smile, just a little internal pat on the back, a little thumbs up to ourselves where we say, hey, look, I did it. I'm the kind of person that does her habits. Look at this. I actually really like this habit when I do it. And the more that we remind ourselves of the good and the more we pay attention to the good that we are working on, the more we'll be drawn to it, the less likely we will be to forget it. And that's the motivating kind of reward that we need to give ourselves each and every time we do that baby step small habit that we're working on. Well, those are three mistakes that we make But another piece we often miss is that habits themselves are made up of three ingredients. And unless you have all three ingredients, you're not really going to have a habit. That's why I've created the free habit checklist that includes a spot for you to formulate your habit with all three pieces so that it's more likely to stick. And then, yes, it has heart check boxes for you to keep track of how often you've done your habit. It's a super fun and handy checklist that I want to give you for free. So just go to simplyconvivial.com slash habit and get it for free. That's simplyconvivial.com slash habit and begin building your homemaking habits effectively because they really do help and they really do matter. Our habits are one of the ways that we repent, rejoice, repeat.